All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, metric model meeting, chaos metric model meetings. Good to have you here. Uh, minutes are in the chat. Uh, I put together an agenda for today. Feel free to add anything that you would like to uh, on the agenda. I think we have a few things we'd like to talk about today that um, might lead to some good conversation. So again, minutes are in the chat. Uh, I can share them here again. There you go. All right, so I'll turn on captioning as well. Hold on just a second. All right. Uh, okay, so the first thing on the agenda today is I just wanted to let you all know, just because it can have implications here, we, at least temporarily, we're combining the science and university context groups. So I should say context groups here. Mm -hmm. um, as there was quite a bit of overlap between the two and kind of some of the questions they were asking. Um, and I think some of the people who would attend one would also benefit from attending the other. So there was just there there was a lot of reason to bring these together. Um, also, there is an effort called Sustain. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Sustain OSF. <laughs> They're a group that's been around for a long time, uh, thinking about ways to sustain open source, just kind of just as the name says. And they have a new working group called uh, ac the Academic Working Group and trying to organize efforts around academic open source. So again, I think this fits well with what uh, Sustain is, is doing. And then finally, uh, I think from a, just an audience perspective, it'll be nice. We have good attendance in the university context working group. Uh, Science had kind of a smaller group and I think bringing them together will, will kind of bring together people in a collaborative way. So we're not kind of running one session over here and another session over there. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if it needs to be split again, that's not a problem. We can do that. But I think for the time being, they're going to be combined. And so the science working group meeting will go away and everything will occur at the university, at the university time. Uh, it's also a bi-weekly meeting, right? Yes. It is a, yeah, it's a bi-weekly meeting. So, okay. Yep. So we have a lot of different people from different universities come to join this meeting. Uh, yeah, for each of them. And then people okay. from scientific software organizations as well. Okay. Yeah, That's so great. yeah, basically um, in the US right now, there are there's a pretty big push to have open source program offices at universities. Mm -hmm. So as faculty are producing software outputs, um, like how do we think about, as an example, <laughs> that that software becoming a commercial product? We, we we have open source program office in the union cities. They're in China. No, but but I just heard it's in US. Yeah, in US. The starting. So, it's right. very nascent. It's very nascent. Yeah. So okay. right now, um, the university meeting is folks from Carnegie Mellon, folks uh -huh. from UC Santa Cruz, Rochester Institute of Technology, also. Uh, the Sloan Foundation, who supports a lot of the work that we do here in Chaos, they uh, recently funded six additional open source program offices. So they're at Syracuse University, Wisconsin, Stanford. So, so there are a lot of a lot of groups that are thinking about how open source is present at the university level. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I'm, and so we have a whole context group because the questions that the universities ask are naturally different than the questions that corporations ask with respect to open source. And so we have a group that's that's concerned about questions in the university context. Okay. So what's the main requirement from this? Uh, I mean, uh, these two groups, of course, these are already uh, combined. Yeah, so the the main like kind of the focus of it, it's a little like the the stuff we're doing with the to do group. So we're bringing together people who can talk about metrics that might be relevant to them or metrics models that might be relevant to them in their particular context. 
Um, but not having to do all of the chaos work that comes with actually building a metric or metric model. So the idea is that these groups can talk a little bit more freely about the things that they would like to see. Um, I can, let me show you, um, if I go to university. So we have, we have these frameworks that we've been building in these different context groups. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't perfect and I need to make a few changes here, but so there are a number of things that say a university cares about with respect to open source. So um, research excellence, research translation. So for example, how is open source um, part of part of the way that faculty members or researchers translate the research that they're doing to a broader audience? Or how does open source help support the mission of research excellence <clears throat> at a university? So they're thinking about kind of specific things, at least in this case, around research excellence and research translation. This one right here is more like how is open source being used in the curriculum? And how are we as an open source program office providing training for students and faculty around around open source? How do we get them to understand how to engage with open source? And so each one of these is then, we kind of look more deeply into it. So we have the function and the goal, and we have a series of questions that we're asking, and then we're looking to, to kind of develop metrics and metrics models mm -hmm. to, to answer those questions. Kind of the same, same thing that we've been doing uh, all along in the chaos project. And so once these context groups identify metrics and metrics models that are relevant to them in their particular context, we would actually bring that work, say, here to the metrics model group, or we would bring that work to the common working group to actually do the development of the metrics and metrics models. So mm -hmm. we're not asking these groups to do that work. We're just asking them to kind of talk about the things they would like to see. So we're trying to meet people where they are without like showing them all of the work in chaos like they don't need overwhelming to them basically yeah. <laughs> does that help yeah it's very helpful okay okay um okay so let's see we can move on the oss eu workshop um so i think this is kind of where we we settled I have reached out to, to some folks about whether or not they'll be able to attend. A lot of people just got back from a little bit of a break, mm -hmm. like their, their own vacation. So I hope to hear from some people today, maybe, or tomorrow about their ability to attend this workshop um, and participate in it. Yui, do you know if if maybe folks from Open Euler could also kind of help facilitate? I'm wondering if we could just facilitate by committee Mm, I think there would be at least one people to help me to organize the thing, okay. but um, but th I I want to check uh, with 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 you guys. Like, um, do we need to send a broadcast mail to our chaotix or or through our Slack channel to tell yeah. them we will we will have the workshop on that yeah, day? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Yeah, not a problem. And. Uh, as you can see, that I already put uh, put the location and the time here. Okay. Huh. Is it open to everybody, Yehui? Yes, it's open. Okay. And it it's only going to be live. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. 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 Do we need to uh, send a mail to to the I mean the, um, uh, the organizer of this event to say to add this event I mean, to the schedule, event schedule. I think it's Daniel who's kind of arranged this, right? I no. uh, I don't know. Yeah, I thought I thought Daniel kind of helped us get the room and stuff. I thought Open Euler was paying for the room. Oh, that could be. They, yeah, Open Euler might be playing, paying for the room. Maybe I'm mistaken. So, Yehui, did you want to reach out to the Linux Foundation 
event team? Is that yep. what you're asking? Yeah, I, because I see all the all the event or or meetings are listed on the on that event schedule. Yeah, they're usually we, happy we, to do that. Yeah, we can we can contact with them. Because I guess in that three days event, there would be a lot of people uh, come to uh, Bear Bar. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want me to do these things? I can. Okay. Um, do you have like a an like a a small abstract, or do we just want to go with this? Because they'll ask for it, or like a title of it, you know, or something like that. Like what what do what do they add to the schedule? Yeah, I I I can I can write something for that. Um, maybe we can first uh, invite people from Open Ruler to to say something about their how to how to, how to manage their community through the uh, health evaluation i mean from that, that dashboard and also we can discuss a little bit about i mean for the rest of time we we can we can ask questions to that community and also we can invite some other guys who may have interest uh, related to the chaos we can discuss everything okay and, i mean for chaos okay that sounds good. If you could, I just put it right here. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, can, I, can, I can put something on that. Okay. And if you could just ping me on Slack, then I can take that and send it to the LF team. Mm -hmm. And they can, they would have something to add to the schedule. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yep. And actually, too, if, if you could do that, then that's something I could also include to the general channel. Mm hmm. Okay, okay. You know, just Thank a little you. overview of what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. You. Yep, cool. Um, and actually, too, if you just just send me the title and abstract in Slack, that way I'll just have it. Mm -hmm. That'd be easiest. Okay, great. Um, the next thing on the agenda is uh, the, the naming of metric model models. <laughs> so, like, this whole like these meta metric models. And I, I see people have put a few thoughts. Yeah, I threw a suggestion there. Um, so model I'm chain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the model chain. I think we can own this. What? I know we have one, which is, um, it's this, right? This is what is yeah. kind of prompting this issue. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be, to be totally honest, I'm a little hesitant about, because we have metrics and metrics models and then metric model models or model chains. Like there, there's always this concern that people are a little confused about what goes on in the chaos project. This and, will add to that. Mm -hmm, this will add to that confusion. Yeah, it will. And so I'm wondering if we just don't name them for the time being, <laughs> and we just, we just we just have a blog post that say, you know, there are ways that you can bring not only metrics together, but metrics models together. And we just kind of tell a story about how you could bring them together. And we, we can just... I, we'll call it the quiet part. Yeah, it's just, we just don't name them. <laughs> we yeah. just talk about Don't them. say it out loud. <laughs> that, that's, that's true kind of my talk, my i mean with, with with the matrix model become more and more complicated i think we, we are touched close to the real case in real, because in the real case it's always very complicated i mean mm -hmm. under the context of, of of the community or project yeah so, so i'm wondering if maybe like um let's see i have so like this is one of the metrics in that metric model, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so I wanted to take a look at this today, but maybe 
you know, somewhere in here, we could talk about how this could potentially be combined with other metric models mm -hmm. without naming it. Yeah, without calling it a noun. It's just, oh, we're gonna yeah. use these together. Like it's it's probably manifest in software more than an abstraction that we need to track. So like, what are these titles? This is heading one. I don't, <clears throat> this is not perfect by any means, but um, you know, I can be used with other metric models, something like that, or, or that's true. Could it, could it just be related? Like, it, does it have to be that strong of an opinion? Like, if yeah. you're looking at contributors, yeah. there's yeah, like three related. metric models that are about contributors or something. Something yeah. like that. That's true. How about that, Jen? Yeah. 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 Okay. And so we could, we could, I mean, this would, this would be easy enough to add to the template for our metric models. Yeah. And that, um, that lets people who are familiar with graph theory, just elaborate and name it if they want to. Mm -hmm. So this, in this case, the contributor domain persona would link out to the contributor or role mm -hmm. link to your maintainer. <clears throat> Something like that. Mm -hmm. Would that be okay for now, Yohui? Yeah, I think I think it would make it more clear. Okay. Um, Sean, does that work for you? And yeah, no, that uh, seems sure. pretty pretty well done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we don't name them. We just talk about them. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're connected. I think. I think the the illusion is enough. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, great. So we're moving right along. Any other comments on that one? All good. Okay. Um, I'd like to to spend a little bit of time on this, Sean. Yeah. So, this is, so just so people know, one of the things that we're doing with Augur is uh, really working in the Augur software to get all of the metrics that are available from trace data implemented into Augur. Right now, it's not um, it's not a perfect relationship between the chaos deployed metrics and Augur. It is not. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's totally fine. But, and then, um, and then once we kind of like compass, once we can have those metrics deployed in Augur, the, the deployment of the metrics models will be that much simpler or that much more accessible just because we have the base metrics available to us and bringing them together in meaningful ways. <laughs> Through yeah. a model wouldn't be as complicated. Yeah, well, um, the metrics will be available. Uh, some percentage, more than half, less than 100% of chaos metrics are available in Augur. But so part of what we're doing is just a mapping exercise where here's how you find it, this chaos metric in Augur, there's where it is. And part of it is wherever there's a gap where we don't exactly have that metric, to filling it and creating an API that generates that metric. So that's that's the that's the work. The development work will be the development of APIs and documentation. So, so may I ask a question, Shan? Of course. Yeah, yeah, for the Augur. So yeah, for the whole Augur solution, so it's not just to provide the metric uh, related data collection, but also including the uh, data process. And and also finally we can we can get the metric data through some API, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So it's played a similar uh I mean the function uh at the at the Grim Lab. I... 
Yeah, so, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I think it is it is similar in the in the very basic sense that we're providing data for some mm -hmm. of the metrics. Yeah. So what's the difference here, Sean? When you say in a basic sense, what what is? The I mean, in a, in a very basic sense, like both tools provide the data. Um, mm -hmm. Augur is more focused on perhaps the data engineering side of things. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that we know what data we have and can speak to the level of completeness within it. And <clears throat> the metrics are accessible in the sense that you can follow the provenance of the data from the APIs and the mining of Git logs through to the database and then generate anything you want with it. So it's not, it's not a front end, right? Like we don't, we don't really provide the kind of front end that other tools do, but we do have um, Sagar is focused on the data engineering and the provision of APIs um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Yui? Looks like you're thinking something. He is thinking, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Because, because uh, from, from, from what I understand, I could like, pro provide uh, uh, us uh, something like a um, POC solution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not right in, in, in service. So, uh, I mean, based on my experience of the Compass, when I use Groom Lab as a backend to collect data, to process yeah. data, mm -hmm. we found that it's really hard to use it directly in production environment. Yeah. Uh, especially considering and uh, um, I mean the scope of data and uh, and uh, and the pipeline. We have to consider a lot of things. Something like we have used this, the message bus to handle in the different message handling. Yeah. Uh, from backend to to frontend. And of course, uh, because Groom Lab, uh, I mean it's a database. It's a uh, it's supported by Open Search or mm -hmm. Elastic Search, yeah. so it's a connector. It could be supported by some front end, uh, I mean, ready in box solution, something like Kibana. We can directly use that, or yeah. we can access it from the Grafana uh, easily. So, at least the uh, Groom Lab is a. Um, I mean, it's a full solution, no matter how mature or not it is, but uh, it, it can be a doing some, uh, uh, I mean, the con concept of proof uh, in, in the environment. If you want to try to collect data uh, to, to make some metric evaluation on your community, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that's true. I think where Augur stands out, just uh, you know, creates a different space is um, at scale. You know, there's a number of interest in instances with over a hundred thousand repositories um, in them. So uh, Augur is just sort of built to scale from the start um, as a data tool. Which is a little bit different from Grimoire Lab. Um, not saying it's better or worse. Uh, just it's you know it's designed for that that high scale. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which you know sort of reflects my interest as a researcher, right? That large scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are you with is Compass having challenges? From a data perspective, or I mean, I mean, not for uh, Grim Lab because we are doing some lot of work. I mean, in the down downstream, mm -hmm. as part of Grim Lab users, but I'm also thinking if it's possible to, to you know, connect with the data from getting from the auger. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I think all we need to do is provide you with an API and an instance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, um, you know, Augur obviously isn't 
no specific, no individual instances aiming to quote unquote gather all the data um but we have some we have a public instance that could be leveraged to get data through our apis for a large number of repositories mm -hmm. yes for sure yeah because currently mm -hmm. we uh, we have using mm -hmm. augur actually behind augur we we using the rust api yeah uh, provided by GitHub, GT, or Slack, or whatever the other any other data sources. Yeah, but I'm more interested on the metric produced by Augur. So, yeah. I I I do some pre study before, like like one years ago. I noticed that Augur could could provide some some more different metrics compared with the Grim Lab. Yeah. Uh, if Augur could continuously to provide such new metrics, I don't really care. It's originally from chaos, but it's uh, if it's meaningful, you know, close to the real case in 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 community, uh, I would like to, you know, um, using Augur to to produce such data. Yeah, I I think that would be great. Yeah, in in that case. And that would contract more people uh, who would have interest on, you know, to doing the data, data process. I mean, yeah. the data science, data science work. Uh, do do not do not spend so much time on the data collection work, because it's really basic works. Because I I'm I'm thinking young people. Would have no super interest on on that part of work, but they are more interested on the work based yeah. on the data, which is already. Yeah, no, that's the, I mean that's what Augur has done is kind of the not fun data engineering work. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can, you know, put Augur more focus on the, I mean the data scientist work, focus the metrics and the metrics model. Yeah. And uh, for the rest of work, we can, you know, leave to uh, Grim Lab or any other en engine, and we can, you know, to enhance that uh, advantage of Augur to produce more valuable uh, metrics and metrics models. I mean, not just the, uh, I mean, the classic uh, data scientist, but also for the uh, large language models. We can also use that data to produce mm -hmm. something new. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's that's the idea. In that case, I would like to you know to adapt the auger to to our compass to attract more people to have interest on that. Yeah, that's great. Um... I think the the development of those APIs is probably central to the. To that goal, mm -hmm. so that's um, that's something that's in progress in the chaos community as well. Because I, I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in the past one year, I, I have some conversation be, uh, with uh, some Chinese students from Nanjing University, from Peking, Peking Universities. They have found have very strong program language skills actually, but they are more focused on the data scientist work. Um, mm -hmm. If we can provide such enriched data based on the metrics we have, yeah, either from Augur and from Grim Lab, I think they can they can build a lot of new things. Yeah, I agree. Can I ask a question? You who you you refer to data science work, like what are you referring to? Something that is different than the development of the APIs. I mean, data a... science. Yeah. Sort of the front end implication, I think, is what I took away from that. And not just the front end uh, uh, implementation, something like um, data analytics, uh, data analysis, right? Like a collaboration, collaboration, co relationship between two two metrics or among different right. metrics. We, we kind of got that. I see. So insights on those metrics and the relationship between them. Yes, exactly. Okay, I got you. So the first step still would still remain the development of these APIs that are the chaos mm -hmm. metrics, 
and then the attraction for for students would be interacting with those APIs or is it the development of the APIs and the interaction? With I'm them? thinking if all the data is ready, I mean, we already put it on in some data data uh, database, mm -hmm. which is cleaned somehow. And we use Augur API to create more sentenced things, I mm -hmm. mean, data sentence thing. And no matter in the uh, in the education on the, the research work, we can do a lot of thing. I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. So this this does um, this is a really interesting conversation, and I really I really do like it. Um, I we have talked about Sean and I have talked about making Augur data and Augur mm -hmm. uh, API endpoints available for people to query against and ask these more scientific questions against. We do have a, there are a few concerns that do come from that. Um, one is the expectation that scientists would have for the data and the amount of work that would be required to maintain that data for other people. Mm -hmm. It's non-trivial. Um, in, in the United States, scientists are um, sometimes prone to simply take data and not contribute back to, to the project that is producing that data. Yeah, scientists are famous for that in our country. <laughs> so, hmm. I don't know about in China, but... The same. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the reason is, is because they have, they have academic outcomes that are driven largely by the publication of papers, not the contribution back to, to projects that help them produce those papers. So I think we would need to sort that out a little bit too, that we don't make this something like this available from a data science perspective and then just tell Sean, all right, you got, you've got, you know, 510 new users. So make sure it doesn't <laughs> make sure it, it stays up and you answer all their questions. Right. Yeah. So um, if, if we could maybe do something like this, um, you were listening to you talk, you know, with a select group of people that might make some really good sense. You know, you had mentioned some students might have an interest in this work and there may be some faculty that are like identified faculty that may have an interest in this work as well. And if we could do it, do that kind of uh, data science work uh, slowly, <laughs> so we can <laughs> build build a good working model that that might be helpful. Yeah, I think in 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 this database, I mean the data story in this database, we can divide it into the different layers. Um, I mean the different kind of data based on the precise uh, deeps. I mean we can provide one part of data as a as a raw data. It's just a very uh, initial, uh, initial data without mm -hmm. any cleaning, uh, cleaning process. Maybe some guy need that such data because that data would uh, contain more in enriched information. And the second layer, we can do some more cleaner uh, process. And of course, we can have third level and uh, all those data available for these researchers and scientists and the students. Mm -hmm. They can based on their requirement to fetch those data, and uh, and create mm -hmm. their own, you know, the new matrix or matrix model or any other things. And I think that would save them a lot of time, which usually, uh, you know, take them more than I know this more than seventy percentage of the, of the time on the whole research work. Mm -hmm. So we can save a lot of time for them. It, it would then, a ton of time. Yes. 70%, I think. Yeah, at least. Sean, what are you thinking on this? Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, the data engineering part, that's, it's been, it's a lot of work to make sure that you're handling all of the different kind of anomalies that exist in data. So yeah, I mean, Augur provides that. Like it deals with all of the things that most of the other tooling doesn't deal with. 
Yeah, so. I mean, I mean, we can make Augur as a, as a, <clears throat> as a scientist <throat> and researcher, researcher's most favorite <clears throat> data scientist okay. API. Yeah, I think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that's who built it. Okay. Augur. <laughs> if it has a scope, I mean, in the open open source, yeah, yeah. evaluation, yeah, yeah. Of course, we have NumPy, we have Pandas. Of course, we have yeah. very good other libraries. Yeah. So, so Sean, in terms of like kind of moving this forward, because I think this is one of the first like this would be a, a real potential to have Augur build more community around it. You know what I mean? Like as we've been yeah. doing for years. So mm -hmm. what what's the good first step for you to to move this forward? Is it setting up like just really pragmatically? Is it setting up a meeting time? Yeah, I mean, you... I've uh, I've talked on Slack about uh, not this week, but next week uh, having a time just for people to gather. Um, I want to avoid uh, the kind of hackathons that we tried there for a year and a half or so. Yep. Uh, just because the they were inconsistently uh, participated in, so um, try to do this a little bit more asynchronously. I think this time. Okay. Um, could the like could could it be helpful to have um, a meeting that a, a little like these that kind of organizes the way work is done not like looking at auger like the meeting <laughs> like just load auger and you would just like you say just hack at it for an hour yeah a meeting that would be like kind of goal centric you know getting people to come together to talk about you know like the, actually the development of api of endpoints um how documentation should be yeah, I mean, I think that's that's kind of the goal that we have, which is separate from this conversation, is to to get people working on API development. Okay. Because I'm wondering if this meeting could be kind of that, that it would be, you know, here here's how we go about identifying um, the endpoints that need to be created that aren't like, here's the first step that we need to do. And the reason we're doing this step is so that we can do two things. So the first thing would be so we can develop metrics models and that so we can make um, data available to others. I mean, I think, I think building metric models is probably the primary goal. Um, you know, making those available, um, mm -hmm. providing data, you know, within within the constraints that we have. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of what we're going to do as well. Um, you know, Augur is intended to be able to be runnable by anyone, and um, lots of people are using it. So, yeah, so that's so, good. Right. And so, like, I'm thinking in here, like, develop metrics models. This is a sensible this is a really sensible path um, that we've been working on for a while. Mm -hmm. um, why, why would you, this is like an example, like why would you want to make these metrics models available in Augur? Is this outside of the obvious? I mean, it's the kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, there is nothing outside the obvious. It is, okay. you know, it's part of chaos. It's like woven okay. into the fabric. So that's what we do. Okay, so help to, to help like not document, <laughs> but architect. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, give people examples. I mean, I think that's where historically Augur has done a good job is making data available for new okay. things that we want to measure relatively quickly, right? When there's yep. a new data source um, yep. or a new, a new idea for how to shape the data, um, we can move on that pretty quickly just because of how we've organized what we already have. Okay. Because as you know that we may we may build and provide service from Compass, right? Uh, we provide some dashboard yeah. 
No, so absolutely. Monday is 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 a, is a dashboard, but but yeah. the people usually think ask if you could provide some beautiful APIs for me, uh -huh. I can build more other things. Right. So in that case, if if Augur could provide such APIs, mm -hmm. I can I can use this API to you know connect to my database and provide data to to other guys. Yeah. And, no, there's. And, uh, yeah, in the same thing for for but... chaos, we have such database. And we have Augur to provide such REST API to let people easily to, to access this database and produce more available metrics model and, and, yeah. and, and any other outcome of, res of research quickly. Mm -hmm. So I, I see this, and tell me if I'm wrong, Yehui and Sean, as you've been having this conversation. So I kind of see this as two things, Sean, that maybe we could talk about in the Augur meeting. So the first is really how do we develop the, the endpoints so that we can build these metric models. And this is just part of, like, like I say, like how to like um, architecting the metrics and metrics models into practice. Like this is just a sensible thing for us to do. This is what we've been doing all along. And for Augur as a chaos tool to support as many metrics and as many metrics models as it can is just mm -hmm. a sensible thing. <laughs> that, just, that just makes a lot of sense. Um, in doing that, it sounds like um, it will start to make more data available to others mm -hmm. in the form of metrics and metrics models. Um, based on based on based on my understanding that. Um... You know, Groom Lab have uh, all, uh, many different backend to support data sources exercise. I, I know Augur also support a lot of different data sources, data sources exercise. But but if we treat Groom Lab to provide main ability, uh, uh, I mean the capability to to doing the data collection and the data cleaning work, and I'll tell people, okay, in our case. In our, in our community, I mean, in Chaos, we provide two main software component. Mm -hmm. First is Grim Live, help us to connect with different, many different data sources and help us to collection, uh, doing the data collection and data, data cleaning and process. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have another wonderful software component to provide some uh, very good REST API or any other APIs to doing the data scientists to work. So yeah. that makes I mean, I... things happen. Mm -hmm. That's the whole solution. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sorry, can I just ask a question? So um, what he is describing right now is what my understanding of the difference between the two was, was that Augur was really focused on things you might pull from GitHub and Grimoire Lab was focused on like being able to go get things from lots of places. And so like, if you needed to get your stuff out of Jira, or discourse or something, then you were looking at your more lab. And mm, if you were but, just looking at GitHub. Yeah, uh, so I guess so I guess my question is just like, are we talking about it almost sounds like you're talking about taking these two things and putting them together. Is that or, or yeah, I, I mean I mean currently actually Groom Lab also support for the uh, GitHub data collection. Yes. Yeah. And, so like and, and I know we know that Augur also support for that. But uh, I think the, the advantage of Augur should provide the most wonderful APIs to create a more high level application of data scientist work and to let the rest of work to the Grim Lab. Yeah, there's a lot of data engineering involved in getting this these metrics actually built. And I think yeah. the issue that you people run into with Grimoire Lab is just when they hit scale, when they go above a thousand repositories, they there are challenges with um, an open search database that sort of cascade through. Um, At one point, something went by in one of the channels about trying to write something to yeah. help people choose. Yep, Don yeah, and Don's Don. working on that. Okay. Yep. Finalizing that. Yeah, I think today's her first day back from vacation, maybe. I don't know. Right. Long. That's what she yeah. said before vacation, but you know, we always say things before vacation. So you are correct, Jen. And that should be, I suspect we'll see that in about a week. So, so on this, this is really a great conversation and has taken a lot of good time. Um, it sounds like 
the thing that we need to think about is kind of this this bottom part here with the points that Jen had brought up and the points that Yehui and Sean are making, which is um, if if we make these these endpoints available to a lot of people, um, it will attract people who have an interest in consuming those endpoints. Yeah, I mean it's the bottom line is for just I mean yes it will. Yeah. And as and as we attract people, uh, we probably need to think about how we organize that attraction. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's gonna have to it's it's obviously there'll be relationships and things that are complicated. Yeah. Um, but that that's cool because I think to Yuhu's point, way early on this starts to create community around these tools, like people who have an interest in contributing back upstream mm-hmm. to the tools. Because on one end, we could basically just say, here are the endpoints. Um, you use them at your own risk. We don't, we, we don't take contributions. I mean, this is at one extreme. We we have developed these and we make them available. You use them, good luck. On the other extreme, as we say, we are completely open source and we accept all upstream contributions. Um, but here's the way that we work. And if we go the other way, the open source way, we we kind of have to explain those processes for people to understand like when the meetings are, what the Slack channel are, how they contribute back, like who the maintainers are, like just all of this kind of stuff, um, which is cool. That's great. Um, so Sean, it sounds like maybe the first things are kind of this. And I, I know a couple of people have been interested, this being the development of the endpoints. Yeah, that's um, that's what we're working on. Yeah, started with. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, this gives me a lot to think about. Like, I I do I I have some some concerns about this. They're good concerns, but I think it's <laughs> things that we need to think about. Building a research community, that one? Yeah, it's like if we make the endpoints available. No, like I mean, that's that's the tricky part is like you can't give away the cow for free, so. No, and expect to just maintain it for everybody else. Yeah, no, that's not, uh, that's not what we do. Hmm. And so that's, that's why there's that one extreme of here are the endpoints. <laughs> do with them what you want. Yeah. And if, if you wonder about how they're created, go look at the documentation. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, thank you for that. It gives me a lot yeah. to think. About. And I think if you could all think about that, that would be super helpful. Um, I did want to say that the Compass blog post is posted. Thank you. Yep. All good. Thanks, Elizabeth, too, for that. And yeah. I was going to suggest we work on this, but we are out of time. Um, you hear the these metrics. I will take a look at this, but these metrics are in the spreadsheet, so that should be taken care of at this point. Um, mm-hmm. Are there things that that you are wanting with respect to kind of this whole collection right here from last yeah. week? What do you need? Uh, uh, actually, uh, in the in the last meeting, I'm talk I'm talking about that uh, for the each of of the important mm-hmm. metrics model, we would provide a chaos blog for yeah. that with the declared uh, implementation yeah. for that and uh, I, i'm continuing working on that okay so yeah after that we maybe we can post the the blocks for for those metrics model that okay. make things explanation more easier okay yeah. do you want to have um the metrics done prior to the blog post or do you want it because like this this one is not really done no, not 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 really. But uh, you know, in the next two weeks, uh, I'm kind of busy on the on the on the uh, OSS summit yeah. in Europe. So I I maybe I I would return and uh, after return back from from okay. Europe and and working on that. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, all right, everybody. Thanks really for a really great conversation. I'm excited about what can come of the auger this auger work. Um, we have, sure. have a com- comment here. Uh, it yeah, also seems sure. to be very interesting. Uh, so uh, I don't know. There's a, actually a um, what do you say the um, 
uh, CNCF, there's a process to review the maturity of the projects mm -hmm. to decide that whether they go to the uh, next level. Um, just, mm -hmm. I actually am going to post that uh, the process do uh, document. So actually, I was interested in it. I, I joined uh, some of the review process. Uh, it's actually all, a lot of that is a manual process at this point. Um, so what are you developing here it seems to be awesome, can be eventually automated. And a lot of the matrix that already in the chaos matrix can probably be added to the process, review process, actually. Do you have a good link, Victor? Yeah, I already uh, added that link to the chat. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't see that. I wasn't following chat. Oh, I see that. Okay. Gotcha. So what it could you? I know we're out of time, but could you? What is this? This is yeah. So if you if you scroll down to the down, down there to uh, probably in the middle of the section, it's basically how do you tell a project has done its work, uh, whether it's active number of contributors. Gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff is exactly what the chaos matrix is mirroring. I gotcha. Um, gotcha. So right now, in order to tell whether a, a project has done all the due diligence to be you know to be um, Ready for the next level in in the in a CNCF um, uh, level, understand. yeah. So yeah, this one, um, yeah. If, it's, if you could go down to the almost the uh, middle, I think of it, it has some of the measurement. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So so what what you're developing here? Yeah, starting from here. Um, uh, so. Um, yeah, so so it will it will use the GitHub uh, dev stats. I think. Yep, it is dev stats. Dev stats. Yeah. yeah, so so I don't know is that based on. Um, this is great. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a use case for what you're developing. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Thanks for bringing that up, Victor. All right, everybody. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. everyone. Bye. Talk to you later. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate the comments. Thanks. Bye. Bye.